This video deals with the basic building blocks of atoms and also their significance for electrical engineering. And in particular, we will look at electrons and protons, we will take a look at the periodic table of elements and also learn about electric charges as the cause of the force effect between particles. And at the end of the video, you will have the necessary knowledge to understand the Coulomb force, the electric field, and later also current and voltage. My name is Andreas from the Fearless Engineer, and here we go. I suppose at some point in school you've already heard of Ohm's law, which basically states that voltage is resistance times current. Now this is a very basic law in electrical engineering, which will accompany us throughout the entire course. You can easily learn and use such a law by heart, but it's much more exciting if you know where it comes from and how you can actually model and derive something like that. And that's exactly what we will do in this video and in the next video. With the introduction of electrons and protons and electrostatic charges and interactions between them, you will learn where the forces are created which make light bulbs shine and drive electric circuits. And when you understand what electrons are, what the term charge carrier actually means, and what the elementary charge is, then in the next video on the Coulomb force, you will have no problem understanding the movement of charges through a cable. Oh, and by the way, this video is part of a basic course in electronics. And if you feel like watching the other parts of it as well, you can find the corresponding playlist in the description down below, as well as on my YouTube channel. So here we go with the introduction to the structure of atoms and the forces between charge carriers. In this module, we'll discuss atoms and charges. And we have a part one, which is this video, which is the theory section where we discuss the building blocks of atoms, the force between charges, and also the concept of the elementary charge. And in part two, which is the next video, we will discuss some hands-on skills which help us to calculate the number of atoms contained in a copper coin. Now what we want to do here is we want to discuss the concept of electricity and in order to do this properly we need to take a very close look at the heart of matter and therefore at atoms which make up the entire world around us. And atoms they do exist in over a hundred different forms as chemical elements such as hydrogen which is the most simple one, we have oxygen and copper and aluminum and many many others. And in the small image you can see here this is a copper coin and this small piece of copper actually contains 6 times 10 to the power of 22 atoms, give or take but it's really a large, large number. And from the set of properties of elements, which contains, for example, size and weight, we are mainly interested in the electrical conductivity in this course here. And in order to discuss the mechanisms behind conductivity, we have to deal with the basic building blocks within atoms, it gets even smaller, and we will take a look at protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, as you can see in the small picture on the right hand side, an atom is built out of a combination of three distinct particles, which are electrons and protons and also neutrons. And each atom has a nucleus at its center, which is a densely packed cloud, a lump of protons and neutrons, which hold each other together with a very powerful force. And every atom has at least one proton to its core, and the electrons are orbiting around this nucleus made up out of protons and neutrons at discrete interval, the discrete distances. And the distance from the outermost electron to the core is basically the radius of the atom. In this picture here on the right, you can see the famous Bohr atomic model, which was proposed in 1913 and which shows the electrons which are arranged in discrete orbits around the center nucleus, which is depicted in red. And the number of blue electrons around the nucleus is usually equivalent to the number of protons in the nucleus. And what's interesting for us from the, from the perspective of electronics is the fact that protons and electrons that they exert an electrostatic force on each other which is proportional to their relative distance and therefore it's weakest for the electron on the outermost perimeter in the upper right you can see it this single electron in the outermost uh, ring and um, in the innermost orbit we also have a number of electrons and this electrostatic force is strongest for them compared to all other electrons in this electron hull around the nucleus and the ability of a particle to exert an electrostatic force on other particles is expressed by the concept of charge. And charges are fundamental to the workings of every electronic device. Now the amount of charge and thus the amount of force a particle can exert on other particles is measured in the unit Coulomb. And Coulomb is abbreviated by the letter capital C. And it has been found by another famous scientist called Millikan, which, uh, who won the Nobel Prize for it in 1923. And he found that there is a smallest amount of charge in nature, which he called the elementary charge. And E is actually very small. It's only 1.602 times 10 to the power of minus 19 Coulomb. 
And the interesting thing about charges is if you take any body in nature, anything, any piece of matter from nature, and you look at the number of charges it carries, it's only allowed to carry an integral multiple of this elementary charge. Nothing in between, no commas, only integral multiples. And if we take a look at atoms again, we can say that electrons have a charge of E minus. So this is minus 1.602 times 10 to the power of nine, minus 19 Coulomb. And protons, they have the same absolute charge amount, but they have a positive sign in front of it. And very early on in science, it has been found that charges of the same type, they repel each other, while charges of the opposite type, they attract each other. So plus and plus will repel, minus minus will repel, and plus and minus and vice versa, they will attract each other. And the major takeaway of this slide is that the electrostatic force between charge carriers is the basic mechanism for the transport of energy in electrical engineering. So every device we power draws its energy from this interaction, this basic interaction between particles, repulsion or attraction. Now let's make a quick summary of what we have learned so far. First is electrons, protons and neutrons, they are the building blocks of atoms. And actually the number of protons in the nucleus determines the chemical element. And secondly, what we have learned, the electrostatic force between electrons and protons is described by the concept of charge. And thirdly, the smallest possible charge is called the elementary charge. And electrons and protons, they are both carriers of this elementary charge. And the difference between the two is the sign of the charge. Electrons have a minus sign, protons have a plus sign. And in the upcoming tutorial video, we will use the knowledge we gained in this section here in order to determine the number of atoms and also of electrons and thus the amount of charge contained within a copper coin. Now in this video I was mainly focused on the more theoretical aspects of the atomic structure of elementary charges and the interaction between charge carriers. And if you are wondering what you might be able to do with it in practice, just take a look at the next video to see how we compute the number of copper atoms in a coin. Oh and by the way, if you have any ideas for further experiments you want to see conducted on the channel and also topics we want to cover here, just drop me a comment down below and I can see if I can make a video of it in the future. So, see you soon here on The Fearless Engineer.